Hello everyone, my name is Jaren. I'm a Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services London office. This is an episode of the video series where you can meet women in the Solutions Architect role, learn more about their job responsibilities, and then dive into a technical use case in which they helped other businesses in their cloud journey. I want to start by sharing a little bit about myself. I've been a Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services for over three years now. My background is in computer engineering, and this degree helped a lot to earn trust with technical stakeholders I work with. In my role, I had an opportunity to work together with some of the coolest startups and big enterprises. I started my career in Turkey, working as an intern in tech consulting roles at Microsoft and Deloitte. Then I moved to Germany, and here I am in England. In AWS, there are different flavors of a solutions architect role, such as specialist essay, partner essay, account essay. I'm an account essay. I work with a subset of software as a service companies in UK, helping them with their cloud journey. Sometimes I design systems from scratch when there is an IT migration or modernization case. Other times, I provide recommendations for optimizing existing cloud workloads to make them more performant, scalable, secure, and reliable. To achieve these goals, I perform architecture reviews and understand where the customer is today, what are their pain points, and where they want to be. And to facilitate them reaching in their goals, I enable customer teams through delivering technical presentations, demos, and hands-on workshops covering various AWS services. A stay role at AWS is a multifaceted one. I have a set of customers I regularly work with, and on top of that, I have other responsibilities too. For example, I'm in technical field community of analytics specialists within AWS. Because I'm specialized in this area, I work with other architects to help them with their complex analytics use cases. And part of my role is about being a thought leader in industry, which I try to achieve through by publishing blogs and delivering public speeches to influence our customers at scale. There is a lot of opportunity to learn and grow every day. Today, I will share a specific customer example where I help my customer to launch a new feature on their SaaS platform. Who is the customer that I worked with in this case? I can't share the name of the customer due to confidentiality reasons, but I can say that they're a business-to-business -business software as a service company in hospitality industry. They provide insights to businesses who use their software by analyzing large amounts of data in different domains, such as sales, operations, and inventory. Within their platform, they provide results for common reporting use cases, such as weekly sales, changes over week over week. Earlier this year, the product team decided to make a new feature launch, which will give their users ability to directly query the data using SQL language. After the feature launch, they started receiving complaints that queries submitted were taking too long, about 10 to 30 minutes, which was unacceptable for their customers. In order to better understand where the bottleneck is, I asked them to walk me through how a typical request for this new feature is currently processed. In that screen, you can see the simplified current architecture of the customer. Uh, their customers submit a query on the web application, and this query is sent to the backend. Backend is built using containers that are running on EC2 instances on Amazon Elastic Container Service. They have application load balancer in front of the containers to balance the requests across EC2 instances. To calculate the SQL query response, EC2 instance connects to the database that holds the data for that customer on a PostgreSQL Amazon Relational Database Service instance. Then the data is returned, response is calculated, and sent back to the web application user interface. What are the challenges with this approach? First, customers are unhappy. They're complaining that queries are taking too long, which is an indicator of low performance. Second, there is a limit on scale, 
as they're provisioning one instance per customer and a new database every time database CPU utilization gets high. This will cause operational complexity as that they onboard new customers with multi-tenancy and isolation planning. And a business limitation to consider is that this customer doesn't have a dedicated infrastructure team. They have an engineering team focused on shipping code as soon as possible, who's not interested in spending time maintaining infra. Considering this customer's challenges and limitations, we could say that proposed solution should process queries quicker, it should be able to handle the scale as data and customer base grow, and finally, it should be easy to maintain. Now that the current state and ideal state is clear, it's time to focus on how. AWS provides the broadest selection of analytics services that fit different data analytics needs. AWS offers purpose-built services for data movement, storage, analytics, business intelligence, and more. The choice of service and approach always depends on customers' needs. As solutions architects, we always work backwards from customer requirements. In order to decide what's best for my customer, I had a discovery call with them and asked more questions. Are there any other consumers of this data? Are the queries submitted regular, always same time of the day and predictable? How many users they expect to have that will query the data in parallel? The list goes on. Using the information I collected, I designed an architecture that will enable my customer to reach their business goals. It's important to note that while I design an architecture, I always think of design principles and architectural best practices for the cloud. AWS Well-Architected Framework describes how to build secure, high-performing, resilient, and efficient infrastructure on AWS using six pillars. When designing workloads, you have to make trade-offs for what your priorities are. Well-Architected helps you to understand those trade-offs and the decision-making behind them. It provides a consistent approach for customers and partners to evaluate architectures and implement scalable design. Before I propose a solution to my customer, I made sure that the architectural proposal is secure and reliable and aligned with AWS best practices. Let's take a look at my proposed architecture now. In this case, what I recommended the customer is to adopt Amazon Redshift, our managed data warehousing service. Customer was initially using RDS relational databases for storing transactions, such as sales and orders. However, with the new feature launch, their requirements evolved. Now they need an engine that is designed for analytics and querying on large amounts of data. While relational databases are optimized for high concurrency requests in real time, they're not built to handle complex queries in large volumes of data. By using Redshift, customer will be able to handle the same queries quicker than RDS. By adopting an OLAP data warehouse while keeping the OLTP database, allows customer to take advantage of the strengths of each type of engine and avoid performance issues that can arise from using the wrong engine for a request. Using AWS Data Migration Service, customer could migrate the existing data in relational database to Redshift and then keep the both data engines in sync using ongoing replication and change data capture. The second key change in architecture is modernizing the database from RDS to Aurora. Aurora provides better performance and scalability over RDS with less maintenance because it uses a distributed storage system that automatically scales up or down based on application needs. Aurora is designed to deliver high performance and low latency, even for large scale workloads. So as my customer grows, this architecture will continue to serve them. To be an effective solutions architect, I put myself in my customer's shoes and think of what questions I would ask based on my priorities and concerns. How to migrate data and keep data sources in sync? 
What is the effort involved in managing Redshift and maintaining it? And more questions around the maintain maintenance of it, the cost controls and the integrations with other services. While I explained my proposed solution to, the, um, to their problem over a meeting, I made sure I addressed these questions before they even ask. I think this is a good technique to use our meeting time the best way and remove any roadblocks in further experimentation. There could have been other approaches to remediate their performance issues, such as using RDS read replicas or using only federated query feature in Redshift without moving the data. I had also explained why the architecture I proposed was more superior to other architectural approaches in their use case. Let's take a step back and see the flow of engagements with my customer from a high level view. During a conversation, customer had mentioned the problem they had with this new feature launch and customer complaints due to slow query response. To better understand the situation, I had a discovery call with engineering team and asked them open-ended questions to get a complete picture of their data strategy. I also explained how Amazon Redshift Data Warehouse could address some of the challenges they had. A key decision maker for the data strategy in my customer's business was the CTO. I had a meeting with him to walk him through the proposed architecture and demonstrated how they could see the business benefits of adopting a cloud data warehouse step by step. After the meetings, my customer was convinced to try the recommended approach to see if they'll get the performance benefit. Following that, together, we decided on a scope for proof of concepts, defining goal and the timelines. After the proof of concept development and trial is complete, we did benchmarking to see how the performance had changed before and after. Customer was happy with the proof of concept results. Hence, now my proposed architecture runs on development environments in process of moving to production. Benchmarking results showed 90% increase in query speed. Seeing the performance benefits, customer fully adopted Redshift in their development environment in less than two months since the beginning of our first conversation. Their plan for feature is to also adapt Redshift in production. Once their usage becomes more mature, I'll facilitate a Redshift cluster view workshop with them and provide recommendations on lower level details of Redshift provision clusters, such as queue management techniques, table design, and key choices. Thank you so much for your time uh, to watch this video. I hope I was able to give you a glimpse of life of a solutions architect at AWS UK.